Hey, what's going on everyone? Enter Chazman here. And I'm here to gleefully welcome you to a bright and shiny post E3 2021 world. Due to me having Game Pass Ultimate, more particularly, I wanted to share with you guys all of the games coming to Xbox Game Pass that I'm ridiculously excited for. So as you can tell with the tone of my voice, I was really happy with Xbox and Bethesda's showcase at E3. But excitedly, one other thing happened for me the other day that really made me want to do this video. Breaking news! That's right, you heard it. I finally was able to land an Xbox Series X, and honestly, it was oddly easy for me. To anyone out there who may be having trouble landing one, I mean, I did it through Microsoft's Xbox All Access plan, which ended up being done through Walmart. So yeah, I got approved almost immediately and received the thing within like two days of me ordering it, which was pretty incredible, I thought. Alright, well, enough of that, let's get back to the games. As for the list I made, the only kind of limitation I put to what games to include in it were games that I thought would be out by the end of 2022, which seems to be about the length as to what Microsoft's roadmap looks like as of right now. But do not fret if a game isn't on here that you are expecting to be on here, because I may have a notable game section at the end where perhaps your game will be brought up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my top 10 games that I'm excited to play on Xbox Game Pass. Number 10. To start things off, a game that piqued my interest last year after I saw its trailer was the game Scorn, a nasty, nasty looking game made by EBB Software, a dev team of which this appears to be their very first game. From what I understand, the game has been in development since 2013, and unfortunately the developer over this time appears to have had some trouble in terms of funding, but luckily that seems to have been corrected, and the game seems pretty far along at this point with them having released a demo and there being quite a bit of gameplay in video form on YouTube. The environments and atmosphere within the game have been closely compared to that of the Aliens franchise, with it really utilizing some very grotesque looking body horror and kind of gothic overtones. The comparisons to Alien are also bolstered by the fact that the developer straight up said this game is inspired by H.R. Giger, so that definitely helps. This disgusting first person shooter is slated to release in fall of 2021. Number 9. Now this next game on the list I honestly couldn't find too much about online. Eudin Chronicle Rising is a turn-based JRPG that is slated to release in 2022 and acts as a prequel to its follow-up game that launches in 2023, Eudin Chronicle 100 Heroes. The kind of hubbub around this game is the fact that it acts as a spiritual successor to the very popular JRPG series Suikoden, and there's also a large amount of the original Suikoden developers that took part in making this game after it was kickstarted. Now once again I am a bit confused because most of the gameplay we saw was of the title coming out in 2023, not of Rising, so I'm kind of curious, I mean they did show a snippet of it at E3, and that still looks good, but I need to see a little bit more. Overall I do love the animations with the mixture of 2D and 3D animations, so I await eagerly for more on this title. Number 8. Next up is Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. I think what interests me the most about this game is the fact that yes, it's a first person shooter that takes place in Russia, which that may seem like people have seen it before, but honestly for me, if you're thinking of the Metro series, I never really was able to get into those games. I played a couple of them, and I don't know, those games just never seem to tickle my fancy. And here's to hoping that Stalker 2 can fill in that role. I would really like to love this game and overall walked away very happy and excited from its E3 gameplay demo or trailer. Number 7. Now this next game is actually the earliest to release on my list. 
The Ascent is a top-down twin-stick shooter that takes place in a dystopian, futuristic, cyberpunkish world, where within this brightly colored, dingy, and really dirty-looking city, there seems to be a handful of evil megacorporations all duking it out over control of the city or of whatever this Ascent Corporation is. So the game does seem to have a bit of intrigue, and the developers, Neon Giant, a relatively new dev team, have also touted the game as having quite a bit of character customization, upgrades in terms of abilities, and incredible powers of some sort. The Ascent launches and comes to Game Pass on July 29th, of which at this point is just around the corner, so I'm very excited to get to try that one out. Number 6 Back to back, the next game I've got is another sci-fi futuristic game that was just announced at E3. Replaced is a very interesting looking game to say the least. It's a side-scrolling platformer with pixelated graphics and an art style that is really beautiful in my opinion. It's definitely one of the more unique looking games in terms of visuals that I've seen in quite a bit. This fairly new development team, Sad Cat Studios, definitely seem to have been inspired by movies such as Blade Runner, and have crafted a world full of machines, I'm guessing, and AIs, and replicants. So yeah, this game is definitely on my radar, and I'm very curious to see what else they show in the future. It's marked down as coming out sometime in 2022. Number 5. The next game that I'm eagerly anticipating is the game Atomic Heart. It's a first person shooter slash RPG that takes place in a strange 1955 where the Soviet Union came out on top and the science of the time advanced way beyond its normal capabilities. Now to me this ideal of the game sounds eerily similar to something like Wolfenstein or Bioshock and that's something that definitely rustles my jimmies. Something to just keep an eye out on is this game apparently has been in a very rough development cycle. After having been in development for quite a few years, the developer Mundfish has apparently in the past had some mass layoffs and I guess from what I'm reading there's been some questionable demos or trailers, of which I don't want to go into too deep on this video, but if that's something you guys think you would want researched or possibly me doing a video on it, that might be interesting. Either way, the game certainly looks really interesting and I'd really love to get my hands on it. It is slated to come out this year. I'm just, I certainly hope they can make that, but again, with its past, I'm not sure what to believe. But if it does come out this year, this is definitely a game you can expect me to cover. Number 4. Next up is another game that's actually not too far away from its release, it is Psychonauts 2. Psychonauts 2 is a platformer that is being developed by Double Fine Studios, and it follows Raz, a powerful psychic that delves deep into people's minds, which really makes what you're doing in the environments in the game super weird, colorful, and incredibly wacky. Now I do have some experience with some previous Double Fine games, more particularly the original Psychonauts, which I actually really enjoyed playing way back in the day. I've also very much enjoyed Brutal Legend, and I did play a couple of the Costume Quest games quite a bit ago. As I said, this game comes out really soon on August 25th, so I almost definitely think you guys can expect me to replay the original Psychonauts somewhere at the beginning of August. Number 3 Okay, so in all honesty, I am a huge Left 4 Dead fan, so it only makes sense that I would be pretty excited for Back 4 Blood. Back 4 Blood is a first person shooter game that is being developed by Turtle Rock Studios, which is helmed by the original creators of the Left 4 Dead games. They of course can't use the Left 4 Dead name because it is of course owned by Valve themselves, i.e. we had to create our own game. Something that I just learned that is a bit worrying is that this game, for some reason, has some sort of card-based mechanics that are implemented. The big question being how exactly is this monetized and how does it make sense in a zombie world? Now two things that while I'm thinking on it kind of remedy this problem I guess for me is that yes I am getting this game on Game Pass which essentially means I'm getting it at a huge discount. And two, the devs have said that within the game there is a classic mode which eliminates these cards and that makes me feel way better. 
Excitedly, this game launches on October 12th, nine days before my birthday, and as long as it has some of the hallmarks of the original Left 4 Dead series and tries to play it close to that, I'd say me and other fans will be very happy. Number 2 Alright, well here we have my most anticipated game of 2021 that's coming to Game Pass. Halo Infinite. Is this finally the moment 343 makes a good Halo game? I certainly hope so. I mean, I didn't totally hate Halos 4 and 5. In fact, I, thought, I still thought they were good games, but they just didn't feel like Halo to me personally. Luckily with this game, 343 looks like they're focusing back in on the Master Chief. And the environments look like they're more similar to Halo 1 with the ring, so it's definitely giving me old school Halo vibes. In full honesty, I'm more of a campaign guy when it comes to the Halos, but the multiplayer showing they had during E3 looks spectacular, so I'm pretty sure the multiplayer like always is going to be really good. The campaign for me is what I truly look forward to in terms of playing a Halo game, so that's something I can't wait to see if 343 can really get right. Number 1 And the game I'm most excited for coming to Xbox Game Pass by the end of 2022 is... Starfield. That's right, a game that we barely got a gameplay trailer for so far is the game I'm most excited for. This is just one of those cases where I just can't help myself. I mean, RPGs that take place in space are just might be my favorite genre. I mean, Mass Effect is my all-time favorite video game series or trilogy, I should say. And I absolutely loved Obsidian's The Outer Worlds that came out in 2019. So like I said, this could just be me genre baiting, but once again, I'll attempt to put my faith in Todd Howard that they can do this game right. And no, I don't just want Fallout or Skyrim in space. They've talked this game up so high, Bethesda, so this needs to be like their next full-on different IP. This is your chance, Todd. This is your chance for redemption for Fallout 76. Get it right. Well, that was the list. As for some of the notable games I mentioned earlier in the video, there is Avowed, Fable, Perfect Dark, The Outer Worlds 2, and The Elder Scrolls 6. Once again, why these missed the list is because, one, I haven't really seen any gameplay released for them yet, purely just cinematics, and two, there is no like time frame as to when these games are going to come out, some of them could somehow make it at the end of 2022. You're probably looking more at 2023 for a lot of these. And as for Elder Scrolls 6, you're not seeing that game till like 2028. So don't worry about that one. All right, well, that wraps everything up. What did you guys think of my list? And what kind of list do you guys have? Feel free to send them my way. I'd love to hear down in the comments what you guys think about Xbox or Game Pass or just E3 in general. What did you think? And with that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching, guys. I love you. Please be safe. And as always, I can't wait to deliver you guys another video and just more content in general. So thank you again, and I'll see you on the next Enter Chasman. Bye-bye, everyone. Hey, now. I see you made it through the video and liked or even possibly loved it. Well, if you want to see any more additional content or you'd like to get into contact with me, consider checking out some of my social medias right here. And if you'd like to go above and beyond and want to support my channel monetarily, here is also a couple places where you can do so. And if nothing else, simply liking, sharing, and subscribing would make me the happiest Chaz man on the planet.